so once in a while I do something on optics. Uh, I thought I would do some optics today. So I did a um, color science uh, talk a little while ago about um, about some RGB displays and stuff. So um, let's kind of expand on color. So here's a piece of colored glass. And, and that's exactly what it is. It's glass with coloring. What, is, what, is, what does that mean? Um, so this is what's called an absorptive filter. So it absorbs, so it says absorptive. And what does absorb mean? Well, you have a piece of glass and then you put some chemicals in it, okay? And I think this is usually salts or something like that. You, you, you have these salts in here and the light comes in and um, some light gets to go all the way through, but some light interacts with these molecules and gets absorbed. So you can see this is a blue color, okay? So only, only blue light, oops, uh, my flashlight's not working light. Uh, it's not really working very good. Uh, it's too bright for the camera, but you, you can see that only, only blue light is coming through this thing. And um, so blue comes through. Well, where's, what, where's the red go, right? White light's coming, you know, where's, where's the red light go? Well, the red light gets absorbed actually in these molecules. And what does it mean to be absorbed? Well, it gets converted into heat. Um, so the light goes in here, those red photons get captured by these molecules and they end up being, being heat. Um, and so this glass will warm up depending on how much, how much light falls on it. And if you have a whole, lots and lots of light, these things can get very hot, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, and so that's an absorptive filter. Is there, is there another way, is there another way to do it? Okay. Let's look at this thing here and it's got a green and a red and a, uh, a blue, right? And so you say, okay, it's just like this, right? That this, this one lets the red light through, but the green gets absorbed and the uh, blue gets absorbed. No, these are what are called um, interference filters. Interference. Can I spell interference? No. Interference filters or thin film filters or dichroic filters. Di Croic. So you, it's the same thing, just different words. Um, some people call them interference filters, some people call them thin film because that's the way they're made, and some people call them dichroics because uh, they operate at different colors of light. So how do these work? So these are not absorptive, okay? So in this particular case, okay, this is one of the thin, thin film ones, okay? the blue light goes through, but what happens to the red light? Well, the red light gets reflected, okay? It comes out, it gets reflected, but it doesn't get absorbed. So these won't get hot. If you have really, really bright lights, these don't get hot. They reflect, they reflect the other color, okay? And I don't know if we can see this on camera. Yeah, we can. You see the, you see the red one there? I'm trying to look through the viewfinder here. There we go, that's good. Red one there, and I, as I tilt it and tilt it and tilt it, it goes yellow, okay? It changes color. And what does the green one do? The green one changes to blue, and the blue one will change just kind of to black. Um, okay, so why? Why do these change with angle? And this one does not. This one changes, stays, stays the same color no matter which angle I use. That's because it's absorptive, but this one's these thin films. So the way that these are constructed, let me go down a bit here, is there's a substrate, glass. Okay, so here's a here's some glass substrate. And we're gonna deposit on top of it little thin layers. Okay, of all these little thin layers. And that's why it's called a thin film filter, because it's all these so You've seen like oil spilled in mud puddles and you see color sheen on, the, on that. That's due to this, this interference that happens in these thin films. The, the oil will be a thin film over the water. So the water will be the substrate, not glass. 
And if we zoom in on these things, okay, then each one of these thin films is a quarter wavelength of the wavelength that we're interested in. All right. So if you think about how it works, uh, you have reflections at each one of these layers. Okay. There'll be reflections at these layers and these reflections. So there's a, there's a, 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 a a sine wave coming in and these sine waves will hit and they'll hit one layer and they'll bounce and they'll come back out and they can bounce in phase or they can bounce, bounce out of phase and uh, which means they can be constructive interference or destructive interference. So if they kind of add up, then the blue light will be added up and it'll come through, but the red lights are destructive and they'll get reflected away. And um, so it's not just quarter wavelengths, but the multiples of quarter wavelengths and eight wavelengths and, and the way that you put them together and stuff. It, it, there's a real uh, art to this and there's computer programs and stuff that tell you how to design these things. And so you can design things that are, that are uh, bandpass filters, or, uh, cutoff filters, high pass, low pass. Um, and you can actually make them so that um, they always reflect and they and that always adds up regardless of the wavelength you can have like different thicknesses and stuff so sometimes blue will be reflected sometimes red will be reflected but in general everybody gets reflected okay and that's the way they make mirrors okay so this is a mirror so mirrors are not just silver deposited on glass. They used to be in the olden days, it used to be mercury and silver and things deposited on glass, but they actually make very, very poor mirrors. Um, and the best mirrors are the mirrors that have a whole bunch of quarter wavelengths deposited on them. And you have a dichroic mirror, okay, dichroic mirror. And uh, these are very, very good. They're, you know, they're 99 point, you know, da, 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 percent reflective. Whereas you, if you make one just out of metal, it's going to be like 93% reflective or something, right? It's not going to be very good. Um, you can have a pure silver mirror, a pure aluminum mirror. I think a pure aluminum mirror is around 93%. Pure silver mirror might be around 97%. I don't remember the numbers now, but the dichroic ones are 99.99. They're, they're, very, very good, and they make they make very, 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 very good mirrors. Okay, so dichroic mirrors. So sometimes you reflect colors, sometimes you reflect white light, sometimes you let through certain colors and stuff. Okay, uh, like this one here. So when I tilted it, it changed color. Why was that? Why did it change color? Well, that's because if we have two layers and we go through at this angle, then the the distance here. Okay, these distances will be the destructive or constructive uh, lengths, right? So if this is L, then this is L. It's 2L uh, that, that bounces here. Well, if I come in at a, at a, a, much, a, a much grazing, more grazing angle, then the distance, the distance is much, much longer, right? I didn't draw that very good, but you, you get the idea that it goes through a longer distance before it gets a, a chance to have destructive or constructive interference. So the optical path length, okay, optical path length um, of the device is different as I tilt it and it changes, it then changes color um, because the optical path length is longer, shorter and longer. Um, and so, yeah, that's the way that works. Pretty, pretty cool. All right. So if I design a bandpass filter, right, I'm going to have a bunch of plates and they're going to be designed so that the output is a, is a, is a, is a bandpass. Okay. Maybe this one's green. Okay. It only lets through green light, but it blocks, it reflects the blue light and reflects the, the green, the red light, but let's through the green light. Okay. And that's, that's the, the stack that we have. And if I make the, the individual layers a little bit thicker, 
then it will come over here and it'll be a red, a red bandpass filter. And if I make them a little bit thinner, there'll be a blue, a blue bandpass filter. Okay. And that's kind of the same thing. Remember the optical path length changes? Well, we're changing the optical path length physically this time, instead of, instead of mechanically, we're, we're changing these layers. All right. So what if we built a filter exactly like this, where this is glass and over here we have real thin layers over here. We have medium layers and over here we have really thick layers. And what if we do that such that they're, they're wedges. So there's no distinct boundaries. They're just wedges. So it's thin over here, but thick over here, you've got these wedges, right? So it's all thin here and it's all thick here. What would that look like? Well, it would look like this. <laughs> this is a, a wedge filter. Okay. It's a, a dichroic thin film interference bandpass wedge filter because these are all wedges, right? This is called a, a, a wedge filter. And you can see that it's kind of rainbowy, right? Kind of like a red over there, green in the middle. Let me, let me, let me do a trick here. Okay. Let me use my, let me use my iPhone here. So I just have some white here and I'm going to put my thing there and look, it's, it's, it's rainbow. Okay. There's red and then yellow and blue. And in fact, there's, there's discrete bands and that's, that's the backlight. Oops. I didn't want to do that. There we go. There we go here. Um, that's the, the, uh, the individual LEDs for the backlight. There's red LEDs, blue LEDs and green LEDs. And, and you can see that you can see that here. And so there's just discrete bands of red, green, and blue for the, for the backlight. And that helps the color science and stuff too. But uh, yeah, this wedge filter is kind of like a poor man's spectrometer. You can just hold it up and you can see the spectrum. So if I look at a fluorescent lamp, I can see the individual phosphor lines of the fluorescent lamp and stuff. Um, you can kind of build an equivalent of this by using a, a, a an old CD, uh, a compact disc, and it acts like a diffraction grating. A diffraction grating will break the, the, the colors up into rainbows, but this is a different way to do that called a, a wedge filter. And I seriously doubt that anybody's seen one of these. They're, they're really, they're really quite rare. Um, I've had this one for a very long time. It's one of my prized possessions. Um, and, um, I have another one here. I haven't looked at this one for a very long time. When I was a consultant, I would always carry things with me. Being an optical consultant, I would always carry a magnifying glass. I would carry a laser. In fact, I would carry multiple color lasers. Um, and I would color, I would carry this poor man's spectrometer. Um, I would always have those in my briefcase. So I could actually do very, very quick measurements on the fly at a customer and that would impress them. Um, they'd go, Oh, this guy knows what he's talking about. Um, this is a wedge filter, but it's a very, very long one. <laughs> it's about eight inches long. And, uh, yeah, so there we go. We can see the, uh, the red, green, and blue, really, really, really good in that one. And, uh, yeah, there's nothing over here, but there is, <laughs> you know, there is infrared over here. So it's very, very long and uh, the infrared light will, will, will come out over here and the ultraviolet will come out over there because it's a perfect wedge and physics doesn't care what color it is. It's humans that care what color things are. But anyway, that's a very, very long one. Um, and uh, they have, I've seen circular ones as well. Like I say, they're very, very rare, uh, but I thought you'd like to see one because you probably won't ever get to see one again. All right. I had a viewer comment. There's no such thing as black glass. Um, so if you plot uh, wavelength versus, uh, I don't know, intensity or something, right? And if you have clear glass, then, then it's going to look like this, right? All wavelengths will go through it at that. Say this is 100%. Okay. All wavelengths will go through. And if you had um, 
colored glass, then this would have a shape, right? It would have a band pass shape or a low pass shape or high pass shape or whatever. Um, but what about gray glass? What if you had gray glass? Well, gray glass would just be, look like this. It would only let through half of the light, but it would be wavelength neutral, okay? And black glass would be down here somewhere. Might not be perfect, maybe it's 3% or something, but it would be 3% at all wavelengths. Well, there is no chemicals to make uh, absorptive filters do this. It's very, very difficult. There'll, there'll, be some, there'll be some bumpiness to it, and it'll work only over a certain range of colors and stuff. And it, it, if you pick it up, it might look purpley. It might not look black. It, it might look like it has a hue to it because maybe it, it, maybe it falls off, maybe it falls off here, or maybe it does, maybe it does this, right? So it lets through a little bit of purple, but it, it's really good at killing red, green, and blue. But it lets through a little bit of the really, really deep ultraviolet stuff, which makes your eyes think it looks purple. Um, so how do you make a perfect gray? How do you make a perfect black? Okay. Well, um, here's a solution. Okay. This was in a variable intensity light light system. I think it was for a microscope or medical device or something. And it has a metal plate with holes in it. So big hole, hundred uh, percent. A coarse grid. You know, maybe 60%, maybe this is 50%, and this is 20%, and there's tiny, tiny, tiny little holes here, and maybe this is only 3%. There's not many holes, holes per square millimeter here. There's like a, 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 a hole every five millimeters over here, um, and they're very, very tiny holes. So that's the way th this solution was done. It was, uh, there you go, that's a better picture of it. Uh, you can see that... Uh, gets darker and darker and darker and darker, right? So that's the way you could do it. And this would be way, this would be wavelength neutral. Well, you can buy filters. You can buy glass that has metal particles embedded in it. And so instead of absorbing the light, they reflect the light. So they reflect half of the light or they let through half of the light. But again, they are wavelength neutral. Um, but there you go. Uh, fun optical facts for the day and things you've probably never seen before. I doubt you've ever seen this before. And I know you, I know you haven't seen one of these before. All right.